Reluctant Preppers provides educational awareness and commentary only. Opinions expressed do not constitute personalized financial advice. Viewers are encouraged to do their own research and seek qualified personal financial consultation before making investment decisions. Does your family ever get exasperated with you for stockpiling such things as paper towels, bottled water, or toilet tissue? Well, they certainly can't object to you stockpiling money. Silver, the only money recognized by the U.S. Constitution, and your first 10-ounce bar of pure silver can be had at spot price with no premium by going to sdbullion.com rp. And when you buy it that way, you'll be supporting Reluctant Preppers as well by going to sdbullion.com rp. Thanks. This is a quick update to thank you for building our number of patrons to 76 and growing on patreon.com slash reluctant preppers. Soon, when we reach 100 active patrons, we're going to start sending out a one-ounce U.S. Silver Eagle each and every month to one active subscriber, so you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctant preppers. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We're delighted to have this returning guest. Lior Gantz is the founder of WealthResearchGroup.com. He's a full-time investor for the past 18 years, an entrepreneur, and Wealth Research Group was named 2017's number one ranked free financial newsletter. He's going to talk to us about the greatest risk to the U.S. dollar that you're not hearing about, the death of the U.S. middle class sooner than you're being told, gold and silver and other less known inflation and chaos hedges. He's going to talk to us about the stock market versus cash diversification and the global economy and changing of the guard away from the U.S. Lior, thank you for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. When we spoke with you in the past a couple of times, you weighed in with us on the general economic situation, and a lot of our viewers are concerned about potential risks and fragility in the market driven by ever-escalating uh, sovereign debts in nations across the world. We've seen a lot of uh, cracks in the foundation of several emerging market countries recently, most notably Turkey. Could you talk to us about what you're seeing in your research about the world and U.S. financial, economic, financial and economic situations? Um, well, I think that um, the important uh, thing to keep in mind is that sovereign debt is is a reality, which isn't new. In other words, um, we can keep looking at debt as a risk, as a constant risk in the economy, but we can't overweigh on what we do in terms of that risk because it leads to mistakes. In other words, um, if all you do is park your investment money in cash, then you're not taking uh, advantage of the fact that, yes, the federal government in the U.S. and many other developed nations are in serious debt problems. But when you invest in the stock market uh, in, in the right way, you're not betting on, um, uh, on the federal government doing better. You're betting on financial companies that have to do a lot with entrepreneurship, the free enterprise system, and, and just general innovation and, and uh, competitiveness doing better. And that is a bet that is uh, worth taking. You can look at 200 and something years of, uh, of back testing of how would your portfolio have been, how would your investment returns have, would have been, and you can look at uh, you know, you don't have to, to have to go uh, 200 years back. You can look at the past 20, 30 years, even the past 10 years. Betting on U.S. businesses is always a good decision when you do it with the the right intention in mind, which is to compound your returns via uh, reinvesting your dividends when you buy good companies at attractive prices. Now, doing that uh, makes you wealthier in the surest way possible over a lengthy period of time. In other words, it does not uh, replace active income, it does not replace your career, uh, it does not guarantee uh, that your retirement savings will quadruple in, in a matter of two, three years. It does guarantee that you're betting on what works. 
So that is something that's, that's important to remember. Now, having said that, one of the best ways to do it for a part-time investor is to use something that I, I, I term as the permanent portfolio or, or the permanent model, which is uh, basically tackling the four major economic conditions, inflation, deflation, recession, and growth. Now, when you tackle all four in one portfolio over the, the long term, you've beaten the S&P 500. So you're, you're talking about something that only 7% of millions of investors worldwide can um, can say that they've done. And you can do that real easily by simply building a portfolio that tackles all four scenarios. And that is basically what Wealth Research Group does, but it does it with, um, with a tweak or with uh, added uh, leverage that actually creates risk parity or, or less risk and better returns. And the way you do that is you weigh in on whatever economic condition is likely at that scenario. And so you don't balance them out 25, 25, 25, 25 by percentage wise. And that um, is also driven by the fact that you can uh, use the, let's say, the growth part of this, the prosperity part of the portfolio by actually leveraging other parts of the portfolio. Uh, for example, you can you can invest in growth by actually investing in, in gold companies, which usually is reserved to inflation hedges. Mm -hmm. So there's there's many mix and marriages that you can do if you're able to back test it and use a lot of um, a lot of uh, software and proprietary algorithms to back test stuff and to look forward at stuff. So you can can punch into the to the um, to the systems what will happen at two percent inflation, what will happen at three percent inflation, what will happen with this sort of an unemployment rate, etc. Um, and over time, this not only balances out your portfolio and it puts you at lesser risk than other market participants, but it also makes sure that you you use positive leverage. And the reason I say that is one of the key things to remember with building a portfolio is that for about every dollar that you put into uh, to growth or to stocks, you should consider how much you you should add to your cash portfolio. Um, and most people they they think okay, let's put a hundred grand into stocks, and then they start putting that in action. And before you know it, they have a hundred percent of that $100,000 invested in stocks. Right. And they don't understand that that is 100% exposure to the stock market. And some of the idea behind building a, a, um, a permanent uh, portfolio model is that you have cash as part of your portfolio. So as part of that $100,000 that you uh, decided to devote to investments, Cash is a position. Now, alternatively, instead of being liquid cash, you can use uh, short-term liquid opportunities. Say uh, you can invest in one to three year month bonds, or I'm sorry, one to three month uh, duration bonds, or private lending for a month or for three months and actually generate some, some interest on, uh, on your cash, but still, you're very liquid. Uh, so if opportunities come or if the, if the stock market does uh, uh, doesn't do well, that part of portfolio actually outperforms people that have 100% invested in stocks. So um, it, it's it's important to understand we're not at a point where risk of a runaway inflation in the major currency, the U.S. dollar, is uh, due to debt. We are already at 21 trillion dollars worth of debt. If that would have triggered a huge scenario it would have done so already obviously with tax cuts and with deficit spending it's it's even worse so the entire investment community hedge fund managers sovereign wealth uh, you're talking billionaires and, and multi-millionaires are looking at the situation the same way you and i are looking at it and they're measuring the fact that this sort of debt is not a imminent threat and the reason I think that they do this is because the U.S. can raise back their tax revenue. They can scale back on entitlements. They can postpone the retirement age. Um, they can do many things that other countries cannot afford to do. And they can tax the rich much, much at a much higher rate. 
Um, there's they can repatriate uh, foreign money. There's many things that they can do before this actually becomes uh, a bigger problem. I think the most immediate problem, most immediate threat to the U.S. dollar, um, as we look at it right now, is division within the U.S. I call it the domestic cancer, the enemy with it, within the mirror. Um, division within the U.S. right now is at, I'd say, an all-time high. Uh, the, the, the difference between the rich and poor in, this, in the United States has never been this way. Um, Wealth Research Group sees that by 2022, there will be no um, viable middle class in the United States. You will have uh, the same scenario as you have in many other developed countries where 10 to 15 percent of the population are... Uh, wealthy. Uh, I don't call what development developed nations call wealthy is is a, a person making a hundred grand or more a year, a hundred thousand U.S. dollars or more a year, um, who prudently saves, etc., is considered wealthy. So, ten to fifteen percent of the population will be considered wealthy, while eighty-five percent will be um, on the bottom end. And this is by 2022. So this is this is not decades away. We're talking about a major transition, and this will impact the next election cycle, and it will impact how um, policies are being made. Because what we what we have seen is that the central bank policy in the United States favors the rich. Now, with the rich being only 10% of the population or 15% of the population, you got to understand major changes are going to occur with the next election election cycle. Because 85% of the people are not enjoying QE. Uh, as Charlie Munger said, the, the partner of uh, Warren Buffett, he said, we're all undeserving rich people here in this uh, scenario because QE has helped the rich. It, it trickled to the rich first. Uh, the stock market boomed. Uh, everything that has to do with asset boomed, but not with job growth, not with job creation, not with Main Street. And uh, Trump is basically looking at this, President Trump is looking at this in a way that how can I even out the odds? How can I align some of this? And that's why he's trying to inf enforce more domestic manufacturing, uh, create barriers that actually uh, try to revive American manufacturing, American um, businesses and enterprises because multinational companies have enjoyed a weaker dollar. They're headquartered in the, the United States. Mm -hmm. They're listed in, in the United States. You, you're... you're um, you're making a lot of money by investing in them, but you're actually not investing in yeah. in the wage growth of the average person in the United States because most of their employees are outside the United States. So uh, if you're looking at domestic uh, companies and, and companies that deal with the United States solely, uh, they will do better with uh, a stronger dollar, uh, but a stronger dollar is also a problem. So uh, what Trump is trying to do is sort of a financial magic where he wants a weak dollar and help the exports, but also help domestic uh, manu manu uh, manufacturing without raising inflation levels. And that is a very challenging situation. The entire United States is going through a very challenging situation because by 2025, they'll, they'll, they won't be the largest economy in the world in terms of GDP. And by 2035, they won't even have the biggest army. So a lot of things are changing um, for this uh, nation. And I think people need to understand that um, the United States should grow at about a 2 2.5% GDP growth per year for the next 20, 30 years, which will add about seventy to $100,000 worth of goods to each person living in America right now. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a situation that is rough or bad. But I think uh, what's really important is to understand that people like Jeff Bezos and people like Mark Zuckerberg or people that have made billions or, or tens of billions of dollars in, in 10 to 20 to 30 years, these sort of people will be more um, common. Uh, it, it will become a much um, more... A doable thing to, to to achieve, to have a business that you build from the ground up and become a billionaire, and I think we'll even see the first trillionaire, because the wealth in general will rise, but less people will enjoy it. It's becoming a more specialized world, where if you're able to tap into a niche, you can become a billionaire fast, and 
the mundane um, workers, the people that have skills that can easy, easily be replaced either by automation, by um, whatever it is that, that can replace them, they will be displaced and it, it, it costs a lot of money to retrain workers. So I think companies will be challenged with how to uh, retrain workers uh, even before they hit uh, 18. So I think companies will start to educate um, future workers much sooner. We'll see a different sort of educational system where you don't learn trivial information until the age of 18, where uh, your parents will make tough choices for you as to what sort of industries you're more skilled to do. And I think you'll learn trade or, or learn a profession much sooner than today's world where you know, people, even in college, they learn trivial stuff and not specialize. Mm -hmm. Specialization will be the key word in the professional world going forward. So, which is ironic, changes. which is ironic, given that the when we were in our previous generation, people stayed with a career their and sometimes their entire lives. When I graduated from college in the uh, mid 80s, they were saying you'll probably go through seven different careers in your lifetime. And now with or technology advancing so rapidly, people have to go through very, very rapid retraining and that kind of things. So sure. at, at the same time, you're getting more specialized. Things are changing faster than ever. So it's a, it's a real difficult situation for most people to keep up. You mentioned the end of the middle sure. class. Uh, we've interviewed Wayne Allen Root, a vice presidential libertarian candidate. And uh, he uh, said that, you know, he, his book, Murder of the Middle Class. So we've certainly talked about that here. And people can look up Murder of the Middle Class on our on our channel for that as well. Um, but you, it was interesting, you talked about the upcoming impact on the election. Uh, what, what specifically do you see as being the major uh, impacts on that? And also you, you alluded to America losing its preeminence as the largest GDP and the largest military power. And it'd be interesting if your insights into which countries, is it China only, or are there others that are, that are poised to, re to replace the U.S. At, at, the, at the lead of the pack? Uh, well, it's China only in terms of uh, who's going to have the biggest GDP and the, the biggest military. Um, in the 21st century, but uh, let's let's go back to some immediate threats, right? So, first of all, with regards to the uh, to the election cycle and and everything that goes on domestically within the United States, I think the most immediate threat to the dollar, and this I haven't seen in any mainstream media, I haven't seen on any alternative media. Um, it, it's it's groundbreaking research that uh, that I just published at the Wealth Research Group. Uh, newsletter and I created a special report for your listeners about it. It's, it's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash Kelly Coin. Kelly is short for California. Kelly Coin, and it's the um, I don't know if if you heard of this, but uh, California, along with 11 other states, including the three largest in GDP, so California, Illinois, and New York, along with nine others, are looking at ways to legislate around the Lincoln Law from 1863 where he outlawed federal, um, I'm sorry, state-issued coins or state-issued currency. And they're looking to create currencies and that will be backed by their by future projects within the state in order for them to um, fund them at their own budget, at their own agenda, at their own time without begging for the federal government to, to come in. But obviously, uh, with this sort of scenario, um, even looking at California, uh, they have the sixth largest GDP in the world. If they opt out of a dollar system or if they move away from the dollar system, there's going to be a lot of foreign countries that will be able to attack the U.S. dollar by uh, directly investing in a Cali coin or in a Colorado coin, etc. And basically, the, the United States will lose its uh, demand for dollars. So the U.S. dollar is not a domestic uh, currency anymore. It, it used to be a domestic currency, but you cannot call the United States um, dollar a domestic currency where 50% of it is outside of the United States banking mm -hmm. system. So mm -hmm. if, if foreign holders are holding on to uh, half of the dollars in the world, at, at any given point, they can liquidate their holdings, they can um, send money back to the United States banking system. Plus, when 60% of the world's currency is U.S. dollars, while only 5% of the world's population is, is Americans, this is an international coin. Uh, you have to manage it as an international currency. It has much different ramifications. It's obviously why the, the debt, the United States uh, federal government debt, is much larger because they have um, interests that are global. 
you wouldn't need the biggest military in the world if you only protected the United States borders. You have uh, military in 200 countries. So, um, and entitlements, etc. Uh, you wouldn't need to create uh, a retirement scenario for 80 million people if you hadn't created a post-World War II uh, middle-class economy where it promised uh, retirement. So the fact that the United States avoided World War II is the reason that they uh, started mismanaging their currency anyways and allowed, um, uh, uh, you know, allowed governments to create a world reserve currency, uh, currency around the dollar, which basically was an idea that bankrupt the Treasury by 1971. So this is a huge problem. It's, it's an ongoing problem. It will need to be resolved at some point. And I think the most immediate threat to the dollar is the division within the United States. If the mainstream media will start reporting um, on this, at their own agenda, obviously because they're owned by corporate uh, structures that have their own billion dollar agendas. Um, if they start reporting about the fact that Trump is now op openly and vocally um, you know, wanting low interest rates and uh, is telling the, the Fed, hey, I want low interest rates to protect our exporters. If they start reporting on the fact that the president is starting to intervene in Fed policy, this will open the door to a much larger public debate and it will increase the division within the United States regarding fiscal policy and monetary policy, which <clears throat> hasn't been an issue in the Obama years and it, it can become an issue now. If they start reporting on uh, the Cali coin and other uh, and, and 12 other states that are talking about issuing their own coin, this will further the um, the problem within the United States. And this is all heading into uh, the next election cycle, which obviously is, is not that far away. Uh, the campaigns will, will soon start, right? So uh, I think the Fed is going to need to manage expectations for themselves politically, and if they do any error or any um, any risky move with policy, say is raising two, um, making a 50 uh, right. basis point right. hike, uh, rate hike, they will reserve that right towards the election. Mm -hmm. So they can say, hey, uh, Trump rushed us to do this, mm -hmm. or something of that nature. So, it, it, and on Trump, on the on the flip side, He's hedging his bets as well. He's telling, hey, I want low interest rates. So if that high interest rate slow down the economy too much and drive us into recession, he could say, hey, I told you so. Pick me again and I'll fix this. So we're, we're going to see a lot of political debate. And I think the the world, people on the outside that are looking at this, governments on the outside, think think on, on the outside, this is a great time for them to attack the dollar. And we're seeing that with... Um, yuan backed oil contracts with gold reserves going up for Russia and China and um, many countries talking about opting out of the dollar system in some sort of way. I don't think it's realistic, but the talk is there. You can't replace a system that controls 60% of the world's currency, but you can start talking about it and looking for solutions that are 10 to 15 years away. It doesn't it, it, You can't create a coin like the euro. Uh, the euro has been in... Uh, in uh, planning mode since the 60s until it took place in the 90s. So th these are not easy events to um, to change. Uh, you can't change the world economy that easily. So um, I know crypto enthusiasts think that the Bitcoin is going to replace the dollar, maybe, but it's it's not realistic in the next 10 to 15 years. You just cannot do these changes that fast, per, uh, excluding a major crisis event that... Uh, basically quickens the need for, for a solution. When we had you on uh, some time ago, you talked about layering your financial fortress, and you certainly mentioned here the benefit of participating in the growth of a economy as long as you can. Um, you've talked in the, and you also mentioned today about hoarding cash to a certain extent as an, as an actual uh, portfolio segment within your in investment. You've talked to us about gold and silver in the past, and you mentioned in passing uh, gold mining stocks. Can you touch on that for us again? Is what role you see precious metals and precious metals uh, industry in, in people's financial fortress? Sure. So, um, contrary to to what many experts talk about, uh, gold isn't the only inflation hedge in the world, and sometimes it's not even the best inflation hedge. Um, 
the reason you want to own, own physical precious metals, physical gold and silver, is you want to have an alternative currency. Uh, so it's not a fiat currency; it's it's an alternative currency. Right. It doesn't uh, it doesn't generate any any yield, but it's been proven by thousands and thousands of years that it has a robust marketplace accepted anywhere in the world. So. In other words, uh, the price of uh, gold is now down in terms of U.S. dollars. But if you are holding on to it ex instead of your uh, Turkish liras, you're doing very well right now. So it's an international currency, and it has very little counterparty risk. Some people say zero counterparty risk. Um, and so it has its place in a portfolio. Um, in fact, uh, Wealth Research, who backtested, what would have happened if uh, Warren Buffett the world's greatest investor of all times would have held his cash position for Berkshire Hathaway's shareholders, part of it, holding it in gold. And what would have happened for the past 80 years, I'm sorry, for the past uh, 18 years uh, since the year 2000, since the bull market in gold uh, started, and they would have done absolutely much, much better. So there's there's a, a real reason to hold uh, gold in your portfolio. And part of it is because it's so uncorrelated with stocks. Stocks can go up and down, and gold can do whatever it wants. So that um, that um, uncorrelation creates diverse diversification, and it's important. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing. the The portfolio strategy that I have with physical gold and silver, I, I'm, I've talked about this in many shows, is uh, I took my lifestyle burn rate, the the monthly expenses of of um, my family, and I converted them into gold, multiplied it by 24. So I have two years worth of 2018's um, lifestyle burn rate, and if I increase my lifestyle burn rate or decrease it, I change it appropriately. Uh, in fiat currency, converted from fiat currency to gold and silver, 80% gold, 20% silver. Um, I have some of it allocated in vaults and depositories, some of it held in, uh, within distance of my main residence or inside my main residence, etc. Um, so that is that is where that is where I use it as a chaos hedge. Now, uh, in order to capitalize on international events such as uh, the Turkish lira demise or the Venezuelan demise or uh, other countries that can go into hyperinflation, you can add a position in physical precious metals if your intention is to capitalize on mispricings that happen. So if 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 you think you can become an expert on Istanbul real estate market. It will be a great exposure for you to have more gold now because you'll be able to buy uh, a, a, a condo or, or, or an apartment in in prime location in Istanbul, which is a great touristic city, etc. Um, and obviously with 18 million people, it's a very robust city. Um, and you can do that. If you don't have aspirations for an international um, exposure and, and international investing strategy, then you can do that by betting on the weakness of the of the U.S. dollar, and that has been a great bet for uh, 47 years, even more, right? But especially in the last 47 years, where it's decoupled from gold, it started at $35 an ounce. It's right now at about $1,200 an ounce. It's it's been a great bet. So uh, that is if you want to capitalize on this further, and that is your own choice. You can do whatever you want, obviously, with um, uh, how how much allocation you want to have it. The mining sector, the the uh, gold stocks, they move at a different pace from gold. Obviously, higher gold prices help them in general, but they need to have specific higher gold prices in order to generate access returns. You, you've seen this year, in 2018, you've seen gold trading at a 52-week high. I remind everybody that it was trading at 13.52 and even intraday at, at above 13.60, only in March and April. So <clears throat> that didn't move gold stocks uh, to a point where they, they rallied hard. Uh, and the reason is that uh, gold stocks have their own uh, pulse. They can move, uh, they can have bull markets and bear markets within uh, the larger um, cycle economy. Where I see them right now is most of the quality ones are cheap, but it doesn't mean that uh, investors will pile in immediately. So something being cheap doesn't uh, and undervalued doesn't actually mean that you must rush into it um, immediately. It can become cheaper. 
That's for one thing. And it can stay cheap for long. So what we need to understand when we talk about the mining sector is that there is an opportunity to have some exposure in it, but it's definitely not a back up the truck, uh, the truck moment. Uh, the, when you want to increase your exposure uh, to speculative sectors, such as a boom bust uh, sector like gold stocks or silver stocks or commodity stocks, it is when they are cheap, which is what they are, hated, which is what they are right now, but they also need to form a bottom and start an uptrend. Even if you miss the first 20 to 30 to 40 percent in these sort of uh, sectors, you haven't missed the line share of the move. Uh, these companies move up to three, four, even 500, 600, 700 percent, even within one calendar year. So you, you, you better wait for an uptrend. You better wait for a confirmation. It's much simpler. Uh, if you, if you want to gain exposure to them, you need to understand in your mind that what you're doing is dollar cost averaging. Yeah. And in order to do that, it, you need to really have uh, the uh, focus at heart that for every dollar you dollar cost average in, you better have exposure to uptrending um, cycles as well. So you don't want to put uh, $100,000 $100, and just say, okay, this is cheap. I'll buy $100,000 worth of just this cheap stuff because it can become cheaper. You can have liquidity moments. Uh, you can have uh, problems with your confidence, with your posture. And some of that $100,000 can be in companies that actually don't get cheaper. They get bankrupt. So yeah. uh, the, a, 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 a deep bear market is also risk, risky. So you need to know exactly what you're doing if you're investing in specific companies. Uh, you need to really know their balance sheets, et cetera. And it's not something a part-time investor uh, should do. Actually, Wealth Research Group created the world's uh, most extensive uh, gold playbook. It's, it's at wealthresearchgroup.com slash world playbook. You can download that excellent weekend reading because it goes through many of the things that have to do with uh, investing in precious metals and precious metals stocks, but uh, to, to to give you a bottom line here, if if you're dollar cost averaging, make sure that on the flip side you keep your exposure to uh, the general equities market because usually when the the general stock market does well, precious metal stocks do poorly. Under pressure. Because yeah. yes, because the risk is much lesser with owning um, large companies than with betting on specific uh, mining operations. Where they do very well is like when we saw in 2016, the S&P 500 went down 11%, and from January to August, you saw precious metal stocks go on average 200% or higher. Wealth Research Group um, was founded in early 2016, right after the first rate hike, and we profiled 12 precious metals companies between, between January and August, with the um, with each of them doubling, one of them going up 300 percent, two of them going up 400 percent, even one going up 700 um, percent. And the reason it was um, doable in 2016 is because of that uh, situation where central banks chose to build portfolios of mining stocks. We saw the Swiss Central Bank and the Norwegian Central Bank doing that. We saw a lot of short coverings as well. So right now what you're seeing is much more sellers than buyers. Mm -hmm. And in the TSX uh, Venture Exchange, the Canadian exchange where mining companies trade. And therefore, uh, if you are putting in your mind, hey, I'm going to dollar cost average quality companies and wait, even wait two, three years to get uh, excess returns. And when I say excess returns, it, it means that eventually you make much more money than uh, with general equities, but you still have to wait a lot of time. Uh, if you're in the mindset of doing that and you really research the companies, this is a great time. But if you're a trader, if you're saying, I'll wait till the last minute, I want to see confirmation, and then I'll be in and out uh, within the, the frame of three months, four months, five months, I want to make um, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 percent on uh on select companies that, that do well this isn't the time yet C conserve your cash uh there are opportunities that are much um more uptrending right now like the cannabis legalization in uh in canada for example which is uh quite cheap still um it is hated i've been to a few mine uh, a few cannabis conferences where people have have uh, raise their hand if they own a cannabis stock. Mm -hmm. And in a cannabis enthusiast meeting, 
uh, about four out of every hundred people are owning stocks right now. Okay. So people are looking at this sector, but they're not investing in this sector, but it's uptrending. And we saw a big, big um, uh, wine man manufacturer, premium um, wine manufacturer, Constella Constellation Brands, which is the owner of Corona beer, for example, making a huge investment into cannabis right now. And I think this is um, going to be a precedence for other companies to, to come into this space. We've been talking with, sorry, we've been talking with Lior Gantz. He is the founder of WealthResearchGroup.com here on Reluctant Preppers. Lior, our time is short. Do you have one last uh, uh, connection for our audience to know how they can get more information on your research? Sure. The best way to do it is hit the homepage and um, subscribe on, on the main um, on the main sign-up form. Uh, the reason that Wealth Research Group has remained a free financial newsletter is because it is done out of passion. Um, I'm a full-time investor for 18 years, and about three years ago, uh, the idea started to sink in my mind that instead of uh, managing money for uh, a boutique uh, firm for a few clients, well-to-do clients, I want to reach a broader audience because I think there's a, I would even say it's it's a, it's a, it's a virus in our economy, in our in our Western world. The way that economic uh, and financial education is passed through the generations. Most people at 18 don't even know how to write a check, how to open a bank account. Mm -hmm. What is interest? Uh, they don't have any idea uh, what it what it means to compound wealth. Um, and the reason it's being done, in my opinion, is by definition, by design. Uh, information has always been withheld for thousands of years in our civilization. And right now, with a lot of good information at your fingertips, all you need to do is really get inspired to get educated. And I think that is the main purpose of Wealth Research Group, to inspire people to understand that wealth is within reach if they do certain steps and take the effort. And we also publish my personal um, research and my personal investment strategy and opportunistic um, ideas when we find them. So it, it's basically uh, a, the best way for me to transfer what I have here and what I've learned into um, text form for our subscribers. Very good, Lior. Thank you so much for joining us here again on Reluctant Preppers. Hey, thank, thank you very much for having me.